Today we will discuss building AWS Lambda functions in Python. Let's first do a brief intro to AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is a serverless compute engine. Now what is serverless? Serverless basically means you don't have to manage servers. With AWS Lambda, you can run code for virtually any type of application with zero administration. Your Lambda function is only executed when it is invoked by relevant events like a push event to your S3 bucket or a new entry in your database or a specified cron task through AWS CloudWatch. The programming languages supported in AWS Lambda are Python, Node, Go, C Sharp and Java. Here is an example of how Lambda functions can be used. You can build your company's data pipeline using AWS Lambda. Every day at a particular time, your Lambda function can extract data from all the sources relevant to your company and load them to Redshift or any other database of your choice. You don't have to manage any servers. All you have to do is assign a cron job to your Lambda function using AWS CloudWatch and you will only be charged for the compute time used by AWS Lambda. So the rest of the time when your code just sits and does nothing, you don't have to pay anything. Now, in terms of pricing, the first million requests on AWS Lambda every month is free. So if you just want to experiment with AWS Lambda and worried you might get charged, don't be. There is a very low probability you will be charged for it. Let's go ahead and create our AWS Lambda function. To do that, we have to first go ahead and sign into our AWS console. Now, if you don't have an AWS account, I highly recommend getting one. AWS is kind of the industrial standard right now. So basically, you would be able to experiment with a lot of uh, services that AWS provides that a lot of companies use. Also, all the services that we will be using in our tutorial is going to be free. So don't worry, even if you are asked for the credit card or debit card account while signing up, you won't be charged a penny. Once you are in your AWS management console, you have to go ahead and choose Lambda. Now remember, if you are first time visitor to the AWS environment, you might see some warnings like you don't have sufficient permission or something like that. In that case, go ahead to your services and then choose IAM here. Basically, you have to go ahead and create a role that allows you full access to AWS Lambda function. Go ahead and click on create role. Then you are going to choose the service that your role is going to use. In our case, it is Lambda. Once you choose this, go ahead and click on next. Here we have to attach permission policies to our role that the role can use. So basically we are going to choose Lambda full access. Here you can see. There's the Lambda full access and we have to attach this policy to our role. Tax is optional and then press next. Now you have to give a role name. So I'm going to call it pylanin underscore test. Now go ahead and create your role. So here you can see pylanin underscore test has been created and it allows Lambda functions to call AWS services on our behalf. Now I can go ahead to Lambda function. And I, I can go ahead and create a function and I'm going to go give it a uh, name to my Lambda function. I'm going to call it pylanin underscore test. Then we have to choose our runtime. So basically the language we are going to code in our AWS Lambda function. I'm going to choose Python 3.6. Then we are going to use an existing role and in the existing role you will see all the roles that you have created. So here I'm going to choose pylanin underscore test. Next, let's go ahead and create our function. So congrats, our Lambda function has been created. Now it's time to go ahead and put some code and see how AWS Lambda function actually works. Let's go ahead and explore our AWS Lambda console. So here you can see this is the function code. Here there are a lot of things you can see. You can add triggers from the left uh, to this list. You can also choose where your AWS Lambda sends uh, the response. Now here you see that the Python 3.6 is our runtime and we can actually uh, edit our code in line here. So this is kind of very uh, developer friendly interface. Now pay attention to this handler info here. It says handler is at lambda underscore function dot lambda handler. So basically 
AWS Lambda, every time you trigger a Lambda function, it is not going to trigger the whole Python file. It is just going to trigger the Python function. Here you can see the file name is Lambda underscore function and the method, the function defined here is Lambda underscore handler. So basically this is what Lambda underscore function dot Lambda underscore handler is the handler function for this AWS Lambda function. If I want to go ahead and change it to test, and then I also have to make sure that I go ahead and change it to test. Now let's go ahead and save it and let's just go ahead and test it. If you test it for the first time, it will tell you, uh, it will uh, ask you to create a test event. So basically what it means is we have to send something as an event so that uh, uh, it invokes our AWS Lambda function. I suggest let's just go ahead with this and uh, we can call it our trigger one and actually you know what let's go ahead and replace this with some names so here i can just go ahead and replace this with names so we can also experiment with these names in our console and let's go ahead and create it so now now if i go ahead and press test you see execution result succeeded status code 200 body hello from lambda so basically it successfully returned these two things but it kind of doesn't make sense right like okay fine we press test it returns something but what is that event that we passed i mean what is that dictionary we saw in the trigger event you know that uh, actually uh, uh, what is that doing so basically if here You know, I uh, print uh, return status code instead of status code. We say just say status and we return event key one. So see, it returns status Lenin. So it is able to read that dictionary and return us the value for that key. Now, how can we use that? So basically events are basically uh, uh, all kinds of events that you can uh, that will allow you to trigger your lambda function. For example, there can be, you know, uh, if you go ahead and search here, you can see that there is an S3 event, uh, S3 put event, S3 delete event. So basically, uh, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of things can trigger your lambda function. Some of them are like uh, Amazon. If you put something to your Amazon S3 bucket, that is an event. So basically you are going to set up such an event and that event is going to be passed in as dictionary, usually as a dictionary into your AWS Lambda function. So basically that is what event is. Now what is context? Context is basically all the information, uh, kind of like a metadata about your AWS Lambda function. If I go ahead to Google and search AWS Lambda context, you can see that the AWS Lambda context object contains all these kind of methods and properties. So basically you get function name, function version, invoke function, ARN. So basically all kinds of information, uh, all kinds of uh, information about the invocation, function and execution environment. So if I go ahead, uh, copy this function underscore name. Let's go back to our AWS Lambda here and we are going to print context dot function underscore name. We can just go ahead and run this and it says status uh, and uh, you see the function name is pylen in underscore test. So basically this is what it printed out. So basically you can use the event object and the context, context object in all of these ways. So we saw how Lambda functions work, right? But it's not productive. I mean, it's not doing anything, right? I mean, it's just a normal Python function and uh, we are just testing it. Let's now go ahead and see something productive with AWS Lambda. So now what we are going to do is every time we put an object to one of our S3 bucket, we are going to invoke this Lambda function. So basically it is going to be automatic. Every time you put an object, automatically this function is going to be invoked and then we are going to print something. So let's go ahead and print. Uh, let's just go ahead and print the event. So every time uh, an S3, uh, you see, uh, you uh, put an object to your S3 bucket. Uh, 
uh, AWS is going to send the event and then we can see what kind of event AWS is sending. And here, instead of such a dictionary, we are just going to return a new object in S3. We just want to test. So let's go ahead and save this. Now go to services and then choose S3. Now I already have a bucket called Lenin dash Mishra. If you don't have a bucket, go ahead and create a bucket. It's very easy. Then go ahead to properties and then in advanced settings, you will see something called as events. So basically receive notifications when specific events occur in your bucket. If you click on it, we are going to add a notification here. And let's go ahead and create, uh, give a name to our notification. We are going to call it lambda trigger, lambda underscore trigger. And then basically it means every time a put event happens. So every time you put something into your uh, bucket, we are uh, with a suffix. Let's say uh, we, uh, we, uh, we are only going to track CSV files. So basically with a suffix of dot CSV, we are going to send a notification to a lambda function and here you can choose the lambda function you want to send a notification to. In our case, it is pylnn underscore test. Let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so we already have one active notification. Let's go ahead to our S3 bucket now. And now we have to go ahead and put uh, upload a file here, right? Now let's click on upload. Now I need to look for a CSV file. So here is the CSV file basically. Uh, it, it is, I don't know what is inside it, but we are just uh, testing it. So let's go ahead and open this and let's upload it. Great. So our CSV file has been uploaded. Let's now go ahead and check if our Lambda function was actually invoked or not. For that, go ahead to Lambda. Now you don't see anything here, right? Like if you open pylnn underscore test, you don't see any kind of notification. Well. You can check that in monitoring. If you go ahead to monitoring, so remember we uploaded our CSV file like a minute ago. So like 458 or something, right? Now if you go to monitoring and then you open view logs in CloudWatch, you can see around 458, see there was a Lambda function here. If you go ahead and click it, you will see that this is basically the logs every time the lambda function of, uh, uh, is invoked and you can see uh, the key here chris-mgx-ih1.csv I mean this is our CSV file right if you go ahead and check this you see chris-mgx-ih1.csv so this file was uploaded and it basically this is the event this is the event that is that uh, that S3 bucket uh, AWS is sending to our Lambda function. Now you, we can use this, this is kind of a dictionary and we can use it in a lot of ways, but basically it ran successfully, right? So this is how you're going to use AWS Lambda function for uh, uh, in your application. Every time you want uh, to run some kind of computation uh, for any kind of event, you're going to use AWS Lambda for this purpose. Now. This, might, this is the basic knowledge that you need to have in order to work with AWS Lambda. However, this is not enough. Why? Because AWS Lambda here, you cannot work with all kinds of libraries. Why? Because See, the beauty of Python is, Python is known for its libraries, all its third party libraries that are very useful like Pandas, NumPy, uh, libraries like that. However, also request, let's say I import requests here, you know, request is a library you can use to get data directly from any API that you want. Now, if I use, uh, let's not write any code, let's just import request. And if I test it, you will see our Lambda function failed. It says unable to import module Lambda function because no module name request. Why is that? AWS SDK, or let me say it this way, AWS Lambda function runs on an AWS SDK and AWS SDK does not have all the Python libraries that you might need. So what is the solution to this? The solution to this is to create a deployment package using AWS Lambda. So basically you are going to provide the request library as a zip file in your AWS Lambda function. So basically all the additional dependencies in order to do that, 
we have to take a different approach. So in the next video tutorial, we are going to learn how to create a deployment package in Python for AWS Lambda so we can add additional dependencies or libraries for our own use.